Cham Cham is one of the best Geraldo players in the game and he broke down Geraldo's shop giving us tons of tips for these items and we'll take turns going through the list. The shooty turrets are definitely a strong and cost effective way of beating the early game and they have some statistics that you can take advantage of. Unlike a dart monkey or a sub which you could use for early game, the shooty turrets have very good pierce. With 10 pierce, you are allowed to pierce through many many more balloons than a dart monkey or sub will allow you to do. This makes rounds like round 15 very easy. It's best used on straight lines to take advantage of this pierce and you can set it to last or you could set it to first and make it shoot down a straight line. Usually one, two or three of these turrets is all you need but depending on the difficulty you could use a few more. However, using a lot of these to carry you all the way until your mid game will not really cut it because they will fall off about on round 30 and the upgraded versions of the shooty turrets will not scale well in the late game so they generally are not worth buying. Next up is the creepy idol which is an extremely underrated item in Geraldo's shop. Starting off the totem is decent in the early game but it's just not as useful as glue at this point so you'll rarely see it being used. This starts to pick up in the mid game however the late game is where this item stands out. The totem support is massive for how cheap it is as it will stun mobs and push back balloons very easily. This is particularly strong on balloon heavy rounds like 94, 96, and 98 causing it to almost always be a value purchase in these late rounds. One little secret is that you can sell this totem even in chimps and this will drop a layer of unstable concoction on nearby blimps for free as long as Geraldo is level 18 or higher. The pickles are an extremely strong support item that can be applied to towers to give them plus one damage at the cost of a small attack speed loss. This this means that it's only worth it to apply pickles to towers who deal less than 5 damage. Overall, pickles work well on low damage, high to medium pierce towers and fast attacking towers like overdrives or super monkeys in general. It can also be noted that the pickle will give a bonus damage to ceramics and fortified moabs later down on the line which will make them even stronger. Pickles is an extremely strong option in the late game but in the mid game you're going to have to be careful with it because it only lasts 5 rounds so it's not really recommended to use constantly throughout but on the hard rounds it definitely will help you out a lot. One trick that you can do with the pickle is that you can apply uh, the pickle buff to Geraldo himself in the early game and all the shooty turrets you have down on the field will get the pickle buff too which can help a lot in the early game because those shooty turrets have such a high pierce that you're giving it such a uh, big damage boost. The camo potion gives temporary camo detection to a monkey of your choice for a low price. Now this isn't always needed as some towers have built in camo detection, but if you find yourself in a tricky early game, you can use a potion or two to hold off on buying a camo village to make things a lot easier. One thing to note is that later on, this potion gives extra range and plus one damage to camo balloons, which helps with DDTs as well as boosting monkeys that have very little range. Overall, when playing chimps, you'll need to make the decision of whether you can get by with just camo potions or if you'll need to buy a camo village. Village. The glue is very strong in the early game and fairly strong in the mid game. However, due to a lack of pierce upgrades, the glue doesn't really stand well in the late game so you don't see it commonly used. The glue can be placed at the start of the track to glue all incoming balloons before it expires 6 rounds later or hits its pierce cap. These slowdown balloons can make the early game much much easier, particularly on tricky rounds like 36 or 15 where having the balloons slowed down a bit will give your defenses more more than enough time to pop them down. Slowing down some wild ceramics in the mid game will also help a lot on rounds like 43 or 63, but generally past 80 is where you don't see the glue trap being used too often, but it can still help out in some very rare situations like saving up on round 81 or 82. One cool trick with the glue trap is on some more harder maps when you're using the maelstrom item in the shop to take down the insides of the moab sometimes the balloons can slip past the maelstrom because there's not really much room on the track for these harder maps so one way to get this round consistent is you can place a glue trap right on top of the maelstrom so when the moab opens up all of the insides will glue get glued right underneath it so that there's no room for for the ceramics or pinks or whatever is inside of the Moab to slip past 
the maelstrom making it a lot easier to beat that round sharp stone is another powerful item in geraldo's shop it can only be applied to towers with sharp type projectiles and these towers will receive plus one pierce for 10 rounds this is a solid uptime for its cost and is very strong on towers with low pierce or high projectile counts like tax shooters or a never miss ace this stone is rarely used in the early game but it's particularly useful in the mid game as those balloon rushes get thicker and thicker this item becomes even stronger in the late game as it also gives plus one damage once geraldo is level 15 or higher and this is very strong in a lot of strategies, particularly tech spam and sniper spam strats. The cape is a very useful item that can be used to build a whole strategy like the super monkey spam strategies. Now at first glance, it looks like the cape will only give a small discount to the base 000 super monkey, which is true, but it does more than that. Using a packing trick, you can buy several 000 dart monkeys all together in one area, and by using the cape, you can one by one turn all of them into to super monkeys. What this will do is allow you to have a lot of super monkeys in a small area, which then you can take advantage of this by putting the discount villages right next to it, making uh, it possible to triple discount on several super monkeys at once. With the normal sized hitbox of regular super monkeys, this isn't possible. So using this trick, you can get lots of tier three super monkeys for a really, really cheap Price. Also, it's not just new super monkeys that can be packed in there. You can also put other support towers like alchemists or glue really close to the super monkeys before transforming them so that you can get the whole crew really close together in a small area and discounted to make a lot of really cheap super monkeys. The blade trap used to be extremely OP, but after many nerfs, it's significantly weaker, no longer making it the late game powerhouse that it used to be. When it comes to the early game, the only real use it has is on round 40, as it can take care of all the ceramics inside the mob. Outside of this, it's almost always recommended to not use the blade trap anywhere before round 79, as there should be a cheaper solution. For example, on round 76, you can use a glue instead of a blade trap. The heavy price of $700 for one extremely short use is just not a good deal. When it comes to rounds 80 plus, it does have some uses though, one of which is to help out in the early 80s when you're saving up for your main tier 5 tower, though this is an expensive option so don't skimp out on defenses and plan on using these. Once Geraldo hits level 15, the blade trap becomes a super maelstrom. This can be used on blimp heavy rounds when your main DPS towers are being pierce capped. Just make sure to use the blade traps offensively in the middle of all the balloons as you really want to take advantage of these things insane pierce. And do not place them defensively at the end of the map as its single target damage isn't great. The Jerry Fire is an underused item in Geraldo's shop. It stays up for 10 rounds and is a very good option for adding a little bit of extra power to your defense, particularly in the mid game and late game for a very cheap price. Because it lasts 10 rounds, it's good for a very long time and you can get a lot of hard rounds in under that lifespan just to help you save up. However, it's a little bit expensive, so you can't really be using this, especially on multiple towers all throughout the mid game. So you kind of want to plan out when the hard rounds will be. For example, you usually can use a few Jerry fires from around 75 to 85. This is a common time where you're gonna be saving up for a strong tier five tower. So using it at that point will allow you to get the power when you need it and you won't waste a lot of money early on. Also, one or two of these Jerry Fires is really good in the early 40s where your defense might be a little lacking. So you can get a few Jerry Fires and it's kind of like getting a temporary Dragon's Breath just to give you a push into a stronger mid game option like a Sun Avatar. The Jerry Fires are also really strong in the late game. Unlike the shooty turrets, they actually scale pretty well. A cool strategy that you can do with this is by spamming a bunch of shinobis or pop lusts and putting the jerry fire on those towers that receive a lot of these buffs because they too will inherit the buffs so this really advances some strategies like avatar of wrath or spirit of the forest or master bomber or um, grandmaster ninja because you can get a lot more damage from these super buffed jerry fires at the end next we have geraldo's cute rabbits when you buy four of them the rabbits will combine into a permanent damage dealer this kill Killer Rabbit can usually be fully purchased before round 63 when playing on expert and advanced maps or right after when playing on easier ones. Either way, for the cost of about $6,000, the Rabbit isn't a bad option as it does solid damage in the mid game and can help clean up in the late game. 
Overall, there really isn't a reason to skip the rabbit unless you know money will be tight. The Riju Potion is a really cool item that you can use in the late game, and there are a few things that come to mind um, when using this. First of all, it can make some ability-based strategies really, really strong and much easier to use. Towers like Plasma Monkey Fan Club, Zara Bomba, Tech Terror and Total Transformation will shred when you can recharge the ability or if you're not as good as the game and you can't really stall out the rounds well, it will give you a little lifeline in case you mess up a stall so you can rejuve, get the ability back and beat the game of Chimps Mode. One easy way to do this for these ability based strategies is just to use a main Moab put it on last, make sure nothing else will really damage that ZOMG that's being stalled. And for some of the rounds that you can't really stall, like the DDT rounds, you can just use the Reju Potion to get it to come back on say 96 or for 99, you get it back for round 100. These generally make uh, these ability-based strategies so, so much easier. It also will save some costs if you need to get two Sabotage Ninjas for rounds like 95 where if you have a defense that's bad at killing DDTs, sometimes you'll need two sabotage ninjas to slow down all the DDTs. Using a rejuve potion instead will save a lot of money because to get that second sabo, you only need to pay $2,000 instead of the cost of $8,000 to buy a whole new sabotage ninja. This can also help on round 100 with the first strike because you can now use two first strike abilities and this will be really, really helpful, particularly if you have a strategy that sucks at killing the bad. Much like the rejuvenation potion, the genie is another very strong item in the shop, but you have to be very careful of when you use it because the genie is only active for two rounds and you'll only have access to two or three genies for rounds 90 through 100. Because you aren't allowed to have a genie for every round, you'll need to plan on when to use it. A few methods that work well is genieing for rounds 94 and 95, then again for 98 to 99. This will let a genie restock for round 100 if you need it. However, if you need a genie for round 96, then you could do 95, 96, and then another for 98 and 99, but you'd have to beat round 100 without a genie in this case. This is a big decision that you should make before going into the 90s because bad genie placements will land you in some trouble on harder maps. When it comes to the unupgraded genie, this guy should only be used in the early 80s when you need a little push on the last rounds of a save up. However, other than an extra push, spending 2k to solve two rounds is usually a waste of cash. Overall, it is very important to moderate how much you spend on Geraldo because what I see a lot of people do is spend spend, 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 and they will have no money to buy actual strong towers. Geraldo has a lot of items that can seem very powerful and give you the damage that you need, but in reality, most of his items are support, and the ones that do do damage are very temporary, and they aren't strong enough to do all of your damage. So as a note, normally you would spend about like a thousand dollars on Geraldo's items for the four, first 40 rounds, and then maybe about three $3,000 at most for rounds 41 through 80. And then in the late game, you really have to just spend as much as you need in order to get the towers that you need. And then after that, a lot of Geraldo's items are so much stronger than other options that you can buy. So you might as well just use them. But for some of the items that you kind of need to time, you can't just like throw them down like the genies. You have to use them carefully. But when you do all of this, Geraldo is going to have some extremely, extremely strong strategies like Geraldo with snipers, Geraldo with tack shooters, and then Geraldo with tech terrors are all amazing strategies that will shred through maps and they're extremely strong that you can use to get free black borders. But those are tons of tips for Geraldo's items from Chom Chom. If you want a more in-depth video on breaking down how to use Geraldo on a few different maps, check out Chom Chom's video right here.